In this video, we're going to talk about the couple of things that we can bring into Civil 3D from our already created corridor. I didn't save the change that we made to our corridor in the last video, so now we're going to go through those objects that I was talking about earlier. Once we've created a corridor, there were a couple of items that we talked about when we were creating feature lines, when we were creating alignments and profiles, a method for creating some of those objects using different other objects inside of Civil 3D. So inside of feature lines, now that we have a corridor, we can actually create feature lines from corridors. Same thing with alignments. We now have the option and the ability to create alignments from corridors, and we also have the ability to create profiles from corridors. Along with those three entities, we also can create a surface from our corridor. And in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to go into our actual corridor. I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild it because it shows that mine is out of date. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to properties. Inside of my properties for my corridor, if I go over to surfaces, what I can do is I can now create a surface based on my corridor. So I'm gonna click on that. And inside of that surface, I have no definitions yet. And so this is the data that I'm going to go ahead and add to my surface. And so what I can add is I can add feature lines that are associated with my corridor and I can add links. Those links are those lines that we talked about when we were talking about our subassemblies. With those links, they have specific codes that are associated with them. So we have top, pave, datum, subbase, curb, sidewalk, slope link ditch, daylight, daylight cut, and daylight fill. Those codes are, are linked to specific objects inside of our subassembly. I know that each one of the objects that we use to create our subassembly have a top code that basically defines what the uppermost layer is of those assemblies. And so using the top code, I can then tell Civil 3D to build a surface off of the very, very top of our corridor. So I'm going to go ahead and set top and set links and click plus. And now it adds the top information to our surface. And we can cl click apply and then rebuild the corridor and click OK. And so when we do that, what you're going to notice is that we get this surface. But it's not a great surface because it has these large triangulation areas. If I go and I look at the object viewer and I look here and I change it over to conceptual and I rotate this down, what you're going to see is you can see the roadway, but there's a lot of area here that we're actually not building with our corridor. And that's just some, some artifacts and some long triangulation lines. And we could do the cleanup on that by deleting lines and and defining our triangulation links and that kind of stuff. But there's also another way to cor correct that by going back into our corridor, going to properties and going to boundaries. And in boundaries, if you look at the dev core surface, if you right click and you go to corridor extents as outer boundary, now you can use your corridor extents as your outer boundary for that surface. And you will go ahead and be able to use the outside boundary for your corridor boundary. And if you hit apply and rebuild your corridor and click OK, you're going to see your surface clean up because you're now using the outer boundary of your corridor as the outer boundary of your surface. And so now if I go into the object viewer and I rotate out into an isometric view, what you're going to be able to see is that now we have a nice defined clean line where our daylight line hits the surface and we have no extra triangulation lines in these areas.